Do, 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 do. This is Alexey from Ace5 Studios and today we're doing a tutorial about gradients and Moore graph cloners and basically it started off from this picture here which a friend of mine asked you know how do I do this so we're gonna talk about the various techniques that are used there first we're gonna go over just the basics so that everyone understands them um, in Cinema 40, using black and white maps is an incredibly handy thing to do. So let's set this to like 50 and this to 50. And for reference, let's get a little cube and oops, let's just squash it out. Now, so the first thing we're going to understand, this cube is just for reference. We're going to make a new material. We're going to give it a gradient from black to white, and apply this material to the plane. And let's rotate it. Okay. In Cinema 40, you use black and white gradients to do a lot of things. In this case, we're gonna be controlling the displacement. So we're gonna hold the Shift key and get a displacer object, make sure it's under the plane. And here we're gonna pick color, and we're gonna drag this thing into here. And now you can see what happens. The black texture went down. Let's exaggerate this. The black texture went down and the white texture went up. So if we go back to our gradient here, and also you'll see there's a curve. That's because here the interpolation is smooth not. If we change it to linear, we get a straight line. And you know, there's cubic knots and stuff. Basically all you really should care about is smooth knot and linear. You can also set it to none, and then you'll just have the white texture is up and the black texture is down. But let's bring it back to smooth knots. Now, if we get this guy and we make this 50% gray, you'll see at 50% gray, it's exactly where it was. So this is important to remember. This is how displacement works in Cinema 40, and this is just generally a very convenient method of like you have to understand what these black and white colors do. Um, and this is the simplest example that I can think of right now. So let's go with something a bit more complex. Let's change this to a noise. And you can see what happens here. Let's get our, let's click on this guy. Let's pick a different noise. Let's pick something like electric maybe. And let's scale this up to 500, maybe even more. Now, as you can see, the black stuff pushes it. Ah, but see, with noise, be careful, because here the colors don't correspond to the textures, or not completely. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna change this to UV2D. There you go. And now we have a perfect correlation. We have the black stuff at the bottom and the white stuff going up to the top. Uh, we can also adjust our contrast here. So you can have something more like a lake but let's keep it at zero for now maybe we want to increase the brightness a bit and i'm keeping this line here so you can see how much is being offset let's go back to our displacer let's increase our amount of displacement so this is a pretty clear illustration of how black and white works to displace this now what we're going to do next is we're going to turn off the displacer and we're going to use this black and white color to control clones. So let's make a cube. Let's make it pretty small. Let's put it into a cloner object, change it to object mode, drag our plane in here, and probably turn off a line clone. Let's make the cube smaller so there's an individual cube for each section. And turn on render instances. Now, as you can see, we have a cube on each vertex. Let's change that to polygon center. There we go. So we have each polygon and we have a cube. Now let's get this cube and let's stretch it out. Nope, not the right, right cube, there you go. Now, if we turn on our displacer, you'll see the cubes update. You see how there was a lag? They didn't update straight away? That's because you wanna have the displacer above the cloner. Now, if we turn it on and off, 
we have instant update because when Cinema 4D reads through the tree, it reads the top stuff first and then it goes down. So this is the kind of the terrain thing that we're going for here. You know, obviously it's less cubes, but the concept's pretty similar. We can maybe scale down the cube a bit and then maybe drag it out a bit. It's about right. Now, uh, as you can see, there's a thing here called Align Clone. You want that turned off in case it's turned on. Uh, so this is a pretty simple way. Right now you can see the cubes are all the same size. But let's say, what if you don't want to displace this plane? So let's turn off the displacer. But we want to modify the size of the cubes. So what we can do is we can use a shader effector. So right now the shader effector and the parameter here will control the scale and its uniform scale. We don't want uniform scale. We want Y scale, we want this to be one. Uh, so they all got bigger. That's because right now we're not getting any shaders. So again, we gotta go here, we gotta pick the color channel of this tag right here. And there we have it, we have the scale. So let's go to the parameter and let's make this zero, no effect. Let's change it to zero, let's change it to minus one. Maybe even minus two. It's not quite right. Mm. Absolute scale is the one I'm looking for. Well, anyway, you see that the problem is right now that we're having this definitely is a problem is that it's texture, it's scaling from the middle out and we just want it to be, we just want it to be from here and up. And then we probably won't have this issue that we're having right now. So what we need to do is let's turn off our shader effector and let's turn off our cloner as well. So right now as you see what happens to the cube is that it's scaling from the cube's axis, which is in the middle. So the easiest way to do is we make it editable and we move the, we go turn our axis tool and we move our axis down to the bottom here. So now when we turn on our cloner, you'll see all our cubes are aligned to the plane and we turn on our shader effector you'll see the scaling. But let's scale it in negative because I think if we scale it to scale it to minus one and this isn't quite scaling to zero. So let's scale it, let's drag it down. There you go, and we see those guys hitting it. There you go, so minus, oops. I guess minus one is okay for this one. But now what we can do is we get the cube and we can just scale it up to get our exaggerated terrain effect. So there it is. This is uh, pretty much the same thing, but we used our shader effector to control this. Let's turn off our shader effector, turn on displacer, and as you can see, we get a very similar effect. Just kind of spaced out a bit differently. I'm not sure why it's All right, let's make a copy of this and just compare them next to each other. So Alt G, and let's control drag this across. Oops, turn off axis. So let's see, we have two now. So we have one, which is using the shader, and one which is using the plane. The color is different and Get this one. In. I think it's yeah. I think it's backwards. Yeah, because here our shader effector is inverted, so let's change this to one. Let's move this guy back down here. There you go. Now this is pretty much same terrain. You have the same crevice. Let's get a material and apply it to the cubes so that we don't have different materials and different cubes. There you go. So you got pretty much the same thing. You have a little hill here, not hill there. Um, to exaggerate these, like this one for example, you might want to play around with stuff, but let's, this is just, um, just, I want to see if I can exaggerate this, but, well there you go, yeah there, so you exaggerate with these, and if you want the overall size of these guys to be smaller, you can scale the cubes. Back down, yeah sure, and then just put a plane underneath so you can't see it drag it all up. And we have pretty much 
a very similar effect. Just created with two different methods. So for now, let's delete this one because I don't know, it's like the first one more for now. So the next goal is we want these little blue things that they have here going on. So we're going to be creating them with another plane. We're going to make a plane. So we're just going to copy this one here. So it's exactly the same and delete the displacer. Okay, you leave the space in the wrong place. Keep that one, this displacer, there you go. And move this plane up here. And I think, oops, let's move it up a bit. I think about like this would be right. Maybe even like this. There you go. And call this water. Now in the materials, we're gonna have to copy and this one as well because we're gonna have to play with it. Call this water. Delete it from this one and apply it back the water one there. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to use a colorizer to draw those lines. So let's make this into a layer first. Layer. And now we're going to go effect and colorize. We're going to get black and black and in the middle we're going to put a white one. And as you can see we're not getting anything. There you go. So what we want is we want to find out, there you go. So we're slowly easing into where we need the black around. You can change this to blue so it's easier to see. So, no, that's too far. Somewhere in there, and let's move this black in here and there we have it. We have our nice little lines. And we can move them in a bit further if we want. But for now, let's draw these ones. Not too close to the edge. There you go. Around there seems right. So let's change this guy back to white because we're going to feed this guy into the alpha channel. So let's turn on alpha. Select both of these, get our texture from the color here, and drag it into the alpha. See, it goes transparent now. Now we can clear it in the color channel, because we still keep it in the alpha channel, and we can just make this whatever color we want. We can even turn on luminance if we want. We turn off the color channel together and just turn on luminance and pick a color from there. So there it is. We got our first layer. And if you want another layer inside here, how they have here, we see that we have like little lines. Um, let's also, before we do that, let's go back in here and let's bring these guys a lot closer together because they're nowhere near close enough to each other. There you go. Now we've got this nice sharp line. And the next one is it's going to be another layer. So in here, we're going to, let's copy this noise, uh, copy channel. Let's go shader and pick layer and go in there and go shader and noise this is going to be the wrong noise but we're going to copy and no we're going to copy going to paste the old noise we have here and then go again effect colorizer and let's pick our black and this one's going to be our white so we can now drag them in to see or is it Let's go find it where we want it. Let's make this one black. There we go. So we want to bring this in a bit more towards the center. Yep. Too much. Let's move it out a bit. There you go. These are a bit close to the center. And now here we have this layer and we can switch it to add. So adding one on top of the other. And there you have it. Now, as you can see, this one is kind of, it's too far out. It needs to be more in the center. So let's go open this layer again and let's move it towards the inside a bit more. There you go. And also we can have this one as white, but this one here, we can change it to a bit of a gray so it's not as strong. 
and there you have it now. You have your terrain and you have your little marks for the water. And then it's just a matter of layering on materials onto each other, you know, to make the little gradients and stuff. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, have fun and comment if you, you know, this is Alexei from Ace5 Studios and comment if you have any questions.